football, fans, beautiful weather, and the Warriors coming to town. That could describe your 2012 homecoming game at Redmond Stadium or Danny Hale Field, whatever you want to call it. The Huskies will get set to take on the Warriors of East Stroudsburg. Coin toss, Bloomsburg would win, and they would elect to defer. Danny Fisher, he would deliver the boot as this one would go back for a touchback. Warriors would start at about their own 20. Here we go. Matt Soltes, he scrambles, he looks, he fires. He finds John Schnars for about a gain of 15 yards. That will put the Warriors in great field position. But later in the drive, they would not be able to do anything. As Terrell Oglesby here with the great coverage, he breaks up a pass intended for Snarls. First drive for the Huskies, Tim Kelly. He gives it to Quiete, one of Quiete's shorter runs on the day. And you'll see why I say that later on in the highlight. Next play, Tim Kelly. He looks, he finds Ryan Dickerson. Dickerson will go nowhere, although later in the drive, Huskies at about the one. Tim Kelly, he drops back. He hands it off to Franklin Quiete. And Quiete does what he does. That's a touchdown, Huskies. Quiete's first on the day. After a decent drive by the Warriors, Taylor Groff will come on to attempt a 52-yard field goal. We saw Danny Fisher make one here on this very field. Same exact spot. And this one is also good. Taylor Groff with a boot. Next drive for Bloomsburg. Tim Kelly. Play action. He rolls out to his right. And he is going to find Ryan Dickerson. First down, Huskies. After the 14-yard reception by Dickerson, the Huskies will call Quiete's number. He would go. 41 yards. Great downfield blocking by Ryan Maggs. Certainly a team effort in this one. Frank Quiete just doing what he does. Next play for the Huskies, Tim Kelly. He's going to pump fake. He's going to run. He's going to take it all the way into the end zone. That would be a touchdown until that one gets called back for a hold on the Huskies. After the Tim Kelly touchdown got called back, you know what he would do? He would gain some confidence. He would run the ball again saying, you know what, I can't get the touchdown. I guess I should just take the first down. Next play, Tim Kelly. He looks, he finds defensive end Larry Webster at 6'7", 240 for the touchdown in the back of the end zone, looking like Megatron on that one. After three and outs by both teams, Dan Fisher would punt this ball away, and this one would get tipped by a Warriors defender, that one not going very far at all, just to about the 46-yard line. Later in the Warriors' drive, Matt Soltes, he would pass the ball to Thomas Tippett, and he would take this one to about the five-yard line, and Eric Deary would take care of the rest. He would punch this one in from about five yards out, that will make the score 14 to nine. Now after that touchdown run, you see here Pete Walmart. Yes, Pete Walmart, he would go down with what looked to be a lower body injury. Good sign though, as he would walk off on his own power. After the Taylor Groff extra point and the Warriors kickoff, Tim Kelly play action pass. He is gonna find Ryan Dickerson who goes up and grabs that one. That would take us to about the end of the half. Huskies 14, Warriors 10. Huskies first drive of the third quarter. Tim Kelly, he's going to roll out to his left, and he's going to find Glenn Hutton, the unsung hero in this one for a 37-yard touchdown. That put the Huskies up 21-10. First drive of the second half for the Warriors. Soltes, he's going to give the ball to Kendrick Williams, but he's going nowhere. Huskies playing great defense on this drive, forcing the Warriors to a three and out. After the Huskies would retain possession, Franklin Guite, he runs to the right, and he fumbles right here. This is very unlikely. That one being recovered by number four, Greg Jones. After Soltes led the Warriors into the red zone, he would find Matt Bleeler for a 12-yard touchdown and a beautiful catch by Bleeler. He makes a one-handed catch in the back of the end zone. That would cut the deficit to just four. However, next drive for the Huskies, Tim Kelly, he drops back. He's going to find Glenn Hutton for 68 yards. How about that for a response and a primetime dime? That would make this one 28-17. This is one of the funnier moments in the game. As offensive lineman for the Warriors, Sev Rivers, he got his helmet stuck with one of the offensive linemen of Bloomsburg. This was pretty funny. He's going to throw the helmets on the ground. And, of course, the quarterback, he's got to sort everything out, get things done the right way. Now let's get back to some football here. Soltes, he's going to fake. He's going to run. He's going to throw the ball downfield, and he is going to find Jordan Holloman for the catch. However, this one would be called back due to illegal motion on the offense. Big break there for the Huskies. Now let's get to the fourth quarter. Taylor Groff, he would come on to attempt a chip shot field goal. That one would make this one 28-20 Huskies. After the Huskies got the ball back, they would drive. Tim Kelly finding Glenn Hutton Jr. for another reception in this game. Hutton really had a breakout game in this one. And later in the drive, Franklin Quiete, the 30, the 20, the 10. That's a 40-yard touchdown run for your man number 28, Franklin Quiete. That was his second on the day. After a couple penalties crippled the Warriors' drive, Tim Kelly throwing a prime time dime. 
to Ryan Dickerson. Dickerson is going to go all the way. That one was a 72-yard touchdown. 41-20 Huskies. Next drive for the Warriors, Kendrick Williams, he's going to take the ball at about the one-yard line, and he's going to score for the touchdown. That would make this 41-27 Huskies. And I'm sure you guys know what's going to happen right here. Frank Quite is going to get the ball, and he's going to punch it in for his third touchdown on the day, capping off his 282-yard three-touchdown performance. Your Huskies are going to go on to win 48-27 in the 2012 homecoming game. Coach Hale was fired up after this one. He got a win over a fellow 200-game winner in East Stroudsburg's Denny Dowds. I guess all that's left to say is happy birthday, Rungo.